It's been 20 years since the Coca-Cola Bowl when Wisconsin played Michigan State in Tokyo. 20 years ago today, a Badger win and the gridiron matchup across the Pacific would mean a Rose Bowl berth for the first time in a generation. Yep, and News 3 was the only TV crew to make that journey. Well, back at that time, a um, group in, in, in Japan were, were putting together and sponsoring that game, and they approached us about playing a game there. Now the, fact, the, the trouble was finding someone that would go along with it. George Perlis and I had a great relationship. I asked George if he would move a game at midseason, uh, play the last game of the year, and, and go over to Japan. Who would have thought the way the season matriculated that, that the game would have meant for the right to go to the Rose Bowl? Go, big net! It was really surreal. The whole season, as I look back on it, seems like a surreal season. We bust to Chicago. We were on the same plane as Michigan State's players. Michigan State band, our team, our band, all on the same plane. We sat with the band. Yeah. <laughs> In the very back. I always try to give the players an edge. So with talking with some of our, our professors on campus, we have some that work with astronauts. They showed me how we could turn back the body clock two hours a day by using sunglasses. Coaches did a great job for us in getting us prepared for that time change. We flew and stayed up all the entire flight. And when we got there, I said, it'll be midnight Tokyo time, and we'll be, when we get up in the morning, we'll be right on their schedule, and Michigan State doesn't know anything about that. It was kind of neat because there were other affiliates in the state that were getting our stories. And we, we were the only television yeah. station in the yeah. state to go to this. So it was... It was a big deal. It was. Can you tell me how do we get to the Coca-Cola Bowl? We had an interpreter who was invaluable. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola Bowl. The bowl, not the drink. Coca-Cola Bowl. Uh, I was a senior that year. Played, uh, played free safety. Wore number 37. And Jim Miller, who was their quarterback, uh, overthrew their tight end and happened to land right into my lap. Um, and returned that, I think, a player or two later. Uh, Terrell Fletcher re uh, scored a touchdown. About a four-yard touchdown run. I think the final was 41 to 20. The team knew that that one camera was the conduit back home, and I, my camera was absolutely the center of attention for this whole football team. And they were just like on top of me. Baby, we're going to the Rose Bowl. We're going to the Rose Bowl. And Rose is in their teeth, and they were just going wild. It was just the most magical moment. It was just unbelievable. Oh, it was amazing. I couldn't ask for anything more. I mean, aside from getting married, my own kids, that that's right up there. It was it was the best time. It, it was the best time I've ever had. They were the team that turned this whole athletic program around. They were the ones that filled the stadium. Had we not filled the stadium and, and them and built a solid program there and sustained it, we don't have all the new facilities that we have today. The, the athletic department would not be in the same position it's in today. And so I gave them a lot of credit for being the, guy, the guys that got it done for this athletic department. Great thoughts there from Van Stout, Mike Van Session. That game ended well past 2 a.m. Central Time. Our producer, Steve Kane, remembers lights on at all of the houses in his neighborhood back home. He was even out talking to the neighbors during halftime in the middle of the night. Our thanks to Chief Photographer Mike Van Sestren for putting that story together. Hard well, to believe it's been 20 years. Well, everyone looks the same age, don't they? Yeah, just about. <laughs> Video's a little grainier, though, isn't yeah. it? What a neat story, though. What a great experience. That's pretty cool. Wish they'd do that again.